Today I'm going to try to demonstrate my normal solo docking procedure. Marina. Um, so the, the technique is, the first thing I, I, I haven't quite finished, but I've got my mooring lines, three mooring lines on, on, on the starboard side set. I will put over the fenders in a little while. And I always lower the uh, spray hood because uh, just to reduce windage and it also improves my visibility. So uh, I'm all set. The way I do this, <laughs> it's a bit shocking to some people because it's kind of the crash method, is you come in, you turn into your slip, and when you're so low, you can't stop halfway in, especially if the wind is pushing you off, off of the finger, off of the catway. You have to go all the way to the end. So I've got a fender on the, on the bow, and I've got two of those fenders that are mounted to the, um, I'll show you, I'll film this later, that are mounted to the, uh, the pontoon. And I actually have to crash into that very slowly. So I, I try to, the, the key is to keep enough way on all the way in, and then uh, right before you hit it, give a hard reverse, and then when you touch the, uh, the fender all the way at the end, uh, then immediately put it into forward gear and turn the helm away from the pier, that will, that, away from the, the finger, that will lock your stern into the finner. And then you can, into the uh, catway. Then you can take all the time you want to uh, put over your lines. And I, just leave the engine running and your, your boat is locked. Now the challenge is to stop. You see, this is, this is the view I have. You can see my anchor up in the front there. The anchor actually has to pass past the end of the pontoon uh, when, when I go in before I stop. If you stop too early, especially on a day when there's wind, and I'm certainly going to show you those, on a day when there's wind, if you stop too early or if people come to try to help you and they give you this signal, uh, slow down, slow down, if you do that, it's guaranteed if you, if you lose your nerve and you stop too early, the wind will just push you over into that other boat that's on the other side of your of your uh, your birthing space. So you've got to have the courage and the willpower to resist people telling you to slow down. Go all the way to the end, a big break, reverse gear right at the end to, ho to hopefully just glide in very, very slowly into the, the fender. And then as soon as you touch forward gear and reverse helm, that's what I do. And uh, you know, sometimes it's not real pretty, but uh, it almost always, always works. <laughs> So we'll, we'll see how this comes out. Okay, I'm coming up to the uh, final turn. When I make the final turn, I'm gonna have 10 knots of wind coming from four o'clock, which is gonna push me onto the other boat. right now because the wind is going to push me in. Okay, I'm in neutral. The wind is... Now I'm, I'm going to park right next to that blue boat that you see up there. So I'm, it's just the wind that's pushing me down, down the channel now. First gear, just to give me a little bit of forward gear, just to give me a little bit of weight. And back to neutral. Start to turn in. those two white fenders up on the pontoon if they're on the camera come around and the trick is not to break too early okay nicely aligned and now there, 
touched forward forward gear to helm away from the you see I didn't touch the other boat here and now when I put it in forward gear I'm pressed up against the pontoon and turn the helm away and now it's pushing me into the thing into the finger and now I just leave it in gear I leave it in first gear and go tie up my lines and the engine's still running so that's how it's done now today wasn't a particularly aggressive day 10 knots of wind uh, which is not too too hard when it gets above 12 or 15 certainly above 15 I systematically touch this touch the other boat so that's why I put in uh, an extra fender here to uh, protect it. So that's the technique, sometimes not very elegant, but efficient. Hello, just a quick recap on how I set up my boat for uh, coming in and out of port. Um, on the bow, I've got a bow fender, here you can see that, and I mount permanently here. This is my, my berth here. I mount these two uh, uh, fenders, so, and I just drive it in. I drive it forward until that hits. It won't knock over this water thing. I've already tested that quite thoroughly. Um, and once it hits, then I reverse the, I put the helm away and uh, drive the engine forward, the mo motor forward, and that drives the stern back against the, against the uh, finger here, or the catway as we call them in France. And that works fine. Um, obviously when the wind is blowing only uh, a, a few knots, or, or it's b blowing me against the the, uh, the catway. I only come down about halfway, and then I stop here, and I just I then step down because there's no no sense in driving it all the way forward. And this is the same exact same setup that I use when I visit other ports. Now, obviously, I won't have this protection down here when I come into other ports. I just have my bow uh, fender, and that's adequate. You just have to be a little more careful, drive forward a little slower. But it works fine for me. Now, when the wind is more than 12, or certainly when it gets to 15 knots, when I, by the time I reach the end of the end of the uh, uh, berthing space here, um, the wind has really pushed me that direction. Even if I if I go with a, a certain amount of way, on so I try to go a little a little faster. But it's inevitable that I'm the stern of the boat is going to get pushed over. And quite often when there's 15 knots of wind, I'll touch this other boat here on the fenders. So I've got my fenders rigged, plus I bought one of these big round ones here that you can see there. And it just goes over very gently, and it may just tap that one. And by that time I've reached the end, and then I just power it across, power it back. So that's how I do my arrivals and departures. Um, sometimes they're not real, <laughs> real elegant. I say on some YouTube sites that the guy at the helm picks up uh, a spring line and then uh, ties it off and it pulls the bow in, but I can't do that on my boat because you can see I'm standing at the at the helm right now that it's still another two meters until I get to the end of the uh, catway. So the catway is not long enough to do that technique here, but I understand how they do that. So that's how I do it. Even in visiting ports, I just drive it forward and uh, just try to stop right before I hit the pier. Works for me. Now for this one, I'm going to have about eight knots of wind. Um, that's actually going to be pushing me, pushing me onto the fender. So what I want to do is stay a little bit wide when I go in this time, because the wind will push me into the fender. If you if it, into the finger, if you hit the finger. You're just bouncing off it and then going into the other boat. So that'll be the challenge on this one. Looking at uh, 5.9 knots on the nose. So it'll be pushing me onto the, onto the finger. There, just went to neutral. Start the turn in, but aim wide. I don't need to aim close to the finger because the wind is going to push me onto it. The wind is 
pushing me nicely in into it. And now I can just slow down and stop just about any time now. that there is is pushing me slightly in and I did just push them push put the motor in the gear turn the helm away let it slide in and I just leave it like that and go tie off the lines at my leisure with the engine on and uh, just go tie off the lines and um, and I'm all done so over to the fueling station. Here is only about three or four knots of wind, so it's, this is not a hugely challenging thing. But um, so I'll be backing directly into three or four knots of wind, and also there's about a knot of current that's coming out as well. So here we go. Well, that's how I do the uh, reversing maneuver. I love that reversing maneuver, especially if you can do it into the wind or into a current. You keep exact control of the boat uh, right up to the point that you want. You can just drop the, uh, your lines over onto the cleat. Uh, I, I, I just love that. Okay, I've entered the channel that's leading into Les Sables de Lonne, uh, which is a place I've been to uh, many times before. In fact, they don't even call them on the radio anymore. They always make a stop at the visitor's ponton, which always uh, irritates me because I'm a solo sailor. That means you have to do two maneuvers. So I'm heading down the, uh, the channel. I need to uh, tie up on the port side up there. And you see there's about 13 knots of wind here, 13 and a half knots of wind. That's gonna blow me directly off. It'll blow me directly off the, um, the, the ponton that I'm trying to go tie up to. So it makes it kind of interesting because what I need to do is run up to the midships. I bring up myself up alongside parallel and run up to midships, grab that line and try to throw it over a cleat. And sometimes I miss that cleat <laughs> and so then I have to go around in a circle because it blows blows me off immediately. You don't get a chance, you don't get a second shot, you get one. Sometimes you get lucky and there's someone there who will take, take the line for you and that makes it easier. But if you're all by yourself, late at night or something like that, that's how you have to do it. And um, I'm not a, embarrassed to say that I've missed the cleat and had to, you know, the, the bollard and had to, to had to turn do a 360 and come back around for a second time. Uh, 12 knots of uh, crosswind off of the dock. 
you can see the dock is pretty crowded there. There's three or four boats there. I don't have a lot of space. I only have that space right at the end there. So, uh, tied up now I, I don't know if that came through on camera but I'm tied up along the pier uh, so, you know it's one of the most stressful parts of sailing is actually all these uh, port dock, docking maneuvers you know and to get in and out of your berth so now I have to go check in and then they're going to give me another space up in the marina up there and I have to do this again <laughs> okay that's that you know I'm used to it now so no big deal So that's kind of the end of this series. Uh, of next spring I hope to uh, make uh, another major sortie somewhere. I'll try, I might film if I get a chance, if it's, any, if it's worthwhile, I'll, I'll try to do that. So um, that's it for me and Isabel for the uh, immediate future. Uh, I enjoyed making these films and I don't claim to be an expert or anything like that at all, um, but that's how I do it. Um, and if some of you got some insights or uh, inspiration or that built your confidence that beginners and intermediates can actually go out sailing alone well um, then it was worth it so anyway best wishes to all bye bye